If you're thinking about buying a used vehicle, troubleshooting why your check engine light's on, getting ready to prepare for that emission test, or in between oil changes monitoring your vehicle health, this device could save you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. Now, no matter what make or model of car you have, if this device can save you a trip to the dealership, it's pretty much gonna pay for itself. Now, depending on your levels and abilities, this might not be a substitute for a mechanic if you don't know what you're doing. If you're not already thinking, Think Diag Advanced ODB2 Bluetooth Scanner for both Android and iOS, we're gonna check out the pricing, the functionality, 16 different reset features on here at a fraction of cost of the X431, coming in at well over $800. Again, substantially cheaper. We're gonna talk about the amount of cars that you may or may not get with this, as well as those reset features. Link down below in the description for this item. We're gonna see if we can do a diesel particular filter reset on a Mercedes Sprinter, as well as get the door security codes on a Ford. We're gonna do a health check on a Subaru, a Buick, as well as a 2021 Honda CRV. So you don't miss out on any future upcoming videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button where we take something that we recently built, torque multiplier, inline torque transducer, and tool of choice, and test them to failure. Now the reality is, there's so many different features and functions on here that it's really hard to use them all. On most scan tools, you probably don't use everything and you're probably not even trained to use them all. So we're gonna do our best to get to it and let's get that keyless entry code. Typically, you'll look somewhere on the driver's side here and here we have a port for our OBD2 connector. Got that plugged in. Sometimes they're down here, sometimes they're way up here, sometimes they're over there. Green is good. Go ahead and put our key in the ignition and we'll turn it on. On just so that the accessories and the lights are all lit up, but the engine isn't running. Let's get to all system diagnostics and go ahead and do our VIN scan. We did previously download all of our car modules. We can see we did have a pop-up, set ignition switch to on position. Now on position isn't running and we're already set where we need to be. Do you need to make sure that you're following all the on-screen instructions because it really will help you be successful in scanning for issues. Go ahead and select our year. And I know that the security functions are under special features. And this is part of the body. And we'll go to security. And this is going to be the factory keyless entry code. Turn on ignition, but we don't need the car started for that. The confirm button. Here you can see it popped up the factory keyless entry code. I went ahead and blurred that out. And it did successfully find the code that we wanted. One thing I like to do if you're purchasing a vehicle or just between your oil service interval changes, hit that health report, let it scan through and see if there's any issues. So from here, I like to hit the little down arrow and do the fault report. And then this allows you to actually drill into that abnormal module and if you hit that question mark, it basically does a Google search for you and pops up items that may or may not be helpful. Now, I was really impressed that this caught the CD player error because it, in fact, does have an issue. Now, I can actually confirm that the CD player on here does error and it does have issues. If you wanted to purchase one of these new from the dealer, it'd be like four or $500. An aftermarket one is still a couple hundred bucks. And this tool might have saved you or allowed you to negotiate. If you do use CDs still, getting that replaced or a couple hundred dollars off of the price of this vehicle. And so you might have now just paid for this tool once again. Now we'll go ahead and plug in what might be considered a free scanner that you could use at one of your auto parts stores. We'll see if this finds any issues or even any codes. You can see that it didn't find any DTC codes or any freeze frame data. It's simply because this doesn't have the same modules as what the Think Diag has in it. Now, if we go to the DTCs and we go to View Enhanced, and this is for a Ford, and we're doing Key On Engine On. That's the K O E O. K O E R is Key On Engine Running. And we can again see that. We don't have any codes, meaning that even though this is a pretty inexpensive item, just to read codes, clear codes, and get codes, it doesn't have all the modules that the Think Diag has in. 
and therefore it would have missed something like the audio diagnostic systems. If we want to see what kind of live data we can get, we can do the read data streams. We'll just check it all, hit that confirm button, and we'll go ahead and we can see we got one of seven pages. Scroll up, and you can see the engine RPMs there. If we give it a little gas, we can see that it goes up. But we can also hit this over here, which allows us to graph that we don't have any functionality other than to zoom in and give it some gas and we can see that our graphing functionality does work on here. You can record your screen or hit reports which gives you basically a freeze frame of all of the data that you see on all of the pages. Definitely could use this for checking your oxygen sensor as well as potentially even diagnosing a bad catalytic converter. So the ThinkDiag Bluetooth OBD2 scanner worked pretty well. Pretty impressed with it. Let's move on to the next vehicle. Now you could also use this device with a tablet, but I do want to caution you, you're going to need an internet connection to at least download and install the car modules and sometimes even connect at least once or twice before you can use this thing offline. Now another thing that came up was what kind of connector are we using? Typically you're going to be using the OBD2 and that is a 16 pin connector. Now on the next screen you might have to specify the region, but then everything's on autopilot and it's going to tell you the health of your car. Now there are audible alerts along the way and once you get your reports, typically there's a lot of different options. You can come in and you can decide do you want to generate a PDF from that. There's a little clock button there up on the top right. You can text, email that or do whatever. And you can also save this locally to your device. You can name it accordingly whether you have an invoice number, a job, a customer or even a phone number and a little description of the vehicle. Lots of different options. Now, if we jump back to the home screen, go down to the OBD functions, this is going to give you a couple different options. It's going to tell you all about your readiness monitors, your I am ready for your emissions pretest, as well as you can see 51 different data streams or live data streams are supported. Now, let's jump on over to a Buick. Now, this is a General Motors car or GM, and this Buick is roughly around a 2008, but we'll find that out here very shortly. Now, I do want to mention we're on our third car already. I actually downloaded all of the vehicles and that's the listing that I purchased and that's what it came with. But if you want to install all the cars, it's going to take up a lot of space, about 5.4 gigabytes worth of space. So I'd only recommend downloading and installing just the cars that you need and when you need them. Now we do speed things up to save time during the health check based on your vehicle, the modules, and how it interacts with the tool. And on average, it's taken about one minute. I could see 30 seconds here and then three minutes there, depending on how it interacts with the vehicle. Now I do have one critique here. There's a lot of open space. If you could just throw in a text message button here where I could send that code to a family member or whoever I'm working on the car, that's really all I'm after. I don't need the whole entire report. And well, that's my two cents on that. So we'll jump back to the home screen. We'll go to the OBD functions and we'll see how many different data streams are supported. We can see there's 41 different data streams supported. Now let's jump on over to a 2021 Honda CRV. And for this one, the connection ports, it's really, it's right up underneath here. We got to get in there, but again, not a problem. So we'll plug in our Think Diag tool and we'll go to work. Now, this being a newer vehicle with all the different bells and whistles, this 2021 Honda CRV took over three minutes and 30 seconds to finish that health scan. Now, I honestly don't know if this vehicle is even supported by the Think Diag yet, but it's always good to check and make sure everything was initialized and set up from the dealer. And in this case, everything looks good to go on this 2021 Honda CRV. Now, one thing I do want to mention is software updates. One year worth of updates on all the vehicles, at least that's what I purchased and that's what shows for me in the tool. And that's important because there's issues that are going to pop up. Again, I don't even know if this 2021 is supported right now with the current software version. But you can see the odometer on the vehicle, 2,075 miles, 
Well, the scan tool is actually coming in and saying 20,747. So, and that's exactly why I test brand new vehicles because hopefully that'll be fixed in a future software update. Here we have the 2015 Mercedes Sprinter. This is a four cylinder turbo diesel and we're gonna do the DPF regeneration on it and that's the diesel particulate filter. And we're gonna go ahead and read exactly what's on the screen, follow all the instructions. You're gonna have to know the make, the model, size, and who knows what that you might have to research on for your vehicle before you can do some of these advanced tools. Make sure that you read everything on the screen and follow all the directions exactly or you're not gonna be able to complete some of the tasks or at least complete them successfully. Again, it's critical to read everything on the screen. You can see that our temperature is not up to the 200 degrees or greater that it needs to be. Therefore, we don't have an okay or next or advanced button. All we can do is hit exit. If we're gonna need to get this vehicle up to temperature, we might as well just take it for a drive. So naturally thinking, what kind of data streams can we capture? Over 178 different data streams with the Think Diag, and through just monitoring those, we were able to see and capture a naturally occurring DPF regen. Status was no, went to yes, stayed on for an extended duration of time, and then it switched off to no. For a scan tool, that's just over $100. A lot of value being able to scan multiple cars Diagnosing the health and resetting some of the functionality, I can see a lot of value in this tool. So what are my final thoughts on the ThinkDiag Bluetooth Advanced ODB2 Scanner? Well, I think if you can get this at the right price, it's an exceptional tool. It provides a lot of value and a lot of functionality. If you think about it and look at some of the pricing history of it, it typically goes for about $119. It does track from 99 to 129, but if you can catch this on a lightning deal at 85 bucks, that's a really, really good deal. I mean, one trip, one troubleshooting scenario, and we're not even talking about if you're gonna be using this with family and friends. This thing, for the price, granted it's software as a service, I think has a lot of potential if you have the ability to use it. So just make sure you're spending your money wisely and if this is a tool that works for you, then it does. If you've had any good experiences or any experiences at all with the Think Diag products, let me know down below in the comments. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, go ahead and give it two thumbs down. And as always guys, work smarter, not harder, and we'll catch you in the next video. Just a friendly reminder, go ahead and hit that subscribe button.